What's up, Keep Pounding crew? We're back today with another video. Keep Pounding. Today's topic is Kaywin Barnes, the seventh round pick for the Carolina Panthers in 22 NFL Draft. If you like the video, if you like this channel, if you like the stream, if you like the content, hit that like button, hit that stream. That bell select all, leave a comment down below if you feel like doing so. <clears throat> and don't forget to check out the Keep Pounding group page on Facebook, in all caps, for in-game posts, polls, opinions, reactions to NFL news, and schedules on streams and videos. Let's dive on in. Alright, so at first glance, you're thinking, uh-oh, another Baylor guy. <clears throat> you know, this is a Matt Rule pick, right? But, round 7, two, pick 242, you're looking at a 6 foot even 186. You know, not too exciting until... You start looking at the fact that he had the fastest 40 time at the combine of all the corners. Whoa. You know? That's going to get some attention. Second fastest, actually. Correction on that. And I believe it was a 4.23, which is really, really good. Now, the question then becomes, with that speed, can he cover? Can he knock down passes? Can he do all the things that you're looking for out of a corner? depending on where you're going to use him. So let's take a look at his stats. <clears throat> Based on his stats, you are looking at 7 out of 10 solo tackles, 13 out of 22 solo tackles, 11 out of 13 solo tackles, and then 21 out of 23 solo tackles. So he wasn't used that much, but, or targeted that much. However, he was able to tackle quite well. He got the job done. He was quick enough to disrupt some of these short passes, um, even after outrunning the wide receiver, which is very, very good. Um... However, if you outrun the wide receiver in the NFL, there's no guarantee you're going to be able to catch back up <laughs> and disrupt the pass, unless you are very, very good. Alright, so, as far as pass deflections go, while we're talking about that, one pass deflection in the first year, five in the second year, three in the third year, and fifth, five last year. And as you can see, he was keeping up well with that wide receiver there in the video. There's the one where he comes back and disrupts the pass, pass breakup. So, one-on-one, -on -one, how does he do in red zone? Let's take a look. Interception. But again, who has Baylor played? That's the thing. You look at the game log. Uh, not a whole lot of excitement here. You got Texas, BYU, Texas, BYU, Iowa State, and then you got Oklahoma and Oklahoma State here. That's where the real action begins. How does he do against them? Four total tackles against both. An interception against Oklahoma, which is impressive. And a pass deflection against Oklahoma State. 
that's where the real interest begins in this guy right here. You look at TCU, he had uh, six total tackles in that game. But the real highlight that got on the scout's radar is this one. Two pass deflections against Texas. A rising Texas team, team that has been struggling all year. <clears throat> uh, five total tackles that day. So, with that being said, he is battle-tested. But, he's a corner. Uh, and I've been saying for a very, very long time, we need to keep drafting a corner per year and an offensive lineman per year, whether it be an offensive guard or an offensive tackle every year. I would prefer both positions on the offensive line and a corner every year. Three picks out of the seven need to be that. So we never have a problem at corner again. So we never have a problem on the offensive line again. We just keep reloading. You know, um, it gets solid guys. It's not about the number of picks that we have. It's about the quality of those picks and who we get. So in this guy, Kalen Bar Barnes here, six foot even, 186, I think we got a solid guy who's fast, who's uh, adequate, um, but we'll know in training camp, right? <clears throat> Based on what was there, was that the correct pick? Maybe, maybe not. You know, you still had a few pieces on the board. You still had Alec Langstrom. You still had um, Marquise Hayes if you wanted to go that direction and boost your line again with at the guard position. Uh, we could have also... Um, Gone with another linebacker to boost up that linebacker depth chart. So, you know, it was really, it was really uh, a throw around pick in the seventh, right? Typically, what it is, and uh, based on the corners that were available, I think, you know, we kind of got a little bit of a steal here. We'll see. We'll see. You know, we got to take a look at him in camp. We got to find out what we're doing with. But thus far, I'm happy with it. I think we got a winner. You know, second f fastest 40 time. That's not always going to translate well into the NFL, but you never know. You know, most of the time it does, but it's just one piece of the puzzle, right? You got to look at everything out there to determine whether you got a home run pick or not. That being said, we added to our corner depth chart, and I'm thrilled with it. You know? Can't complain. And who would you have drafted at that point? Who would you have gone after? Um, based on what was still there. You know? What would you have done this, with this pick? Let me know in the comments section. And overall, what would you grade this this draft let me know stay hydrated stay healthy stay well and I'll see you guys in the next video keep pounding